नमस्ते नमस्ते एवरीवन नमस्ते वेलकम टू दिस ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल सेशन एट नमस्ते रेडियो फेसबुक लाइव मेरे साथ हैं संदीप कैसे हैं आप संदीप हम खबर ऐसे हम ठीक है पहले तो वी डेफिनेटली वॉन्ट टू विश ऑल आर व्यूअर्स एंड लिस्नर्स रमजान मुबारक आप सबको रमजान मुबारक बहुत ही ऑस्पिशियस डे है सो यू नो तो उसलिए सबको अगेन रमजान मुबारक एंड आपके सारे परिवार को और आपको तो नाउ मूविंग फॉरवर्ड टू द रीजन वाई वी आर हियर टूडे इज इट्स वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट हम वैसे ही लाइफ में पॉजिटिव रहें but uh up as he it's been so difficult you know uh, with all these situations uh, that the world is facing right now the main situation of covid-19 and uh, staying positive has not been very easy for various reasons uh sandeep how have you been coping up um just you know just trying to stay productive uh just and be positive as much as possible uh yeah it is a very tough time but uh i think the more and more we uh i mean uh the more and more we think down on things the more negative thoughts we have then it just nothing will get better so just try to remember that uh just you're you're blessed in life that uh you still have a lot of things you're capable of doing during this time so best way i think i've been doing is just staying positive and just trying to be productive in what uh what we can do during this time and that's exactly what i've been trying to do uh, keep myself busy as much as possible and just focus on positive things लेकिन जब कोई ऐसा आता है जो इसमें बोलते हैं हम हमारे लेवल से मास्टरी करता है एंड व्हेन ही कम्स फॉरवर्ड और शी कम्स फॉरवर्ड एंड टॉक्स टू अस इट मेक्स अस फील इवन बेटर एंड इट इज आवर ऑनर टुडे टू हैव मिस्टर सुजान शाह फ्रॉम सुजान स्पीक्स थैंक यू सो मच uh for you know taking out time and talking to us our viewers our listeners um namaste and welcome sujan namaste sir namaste namaste so aaj uh, sujan is going to be talking about the importance of mindfulness and surviving through difficult times before uh, we uh, you know let him um, uh, you know get to the main focus of the session today a little bit of uh, you, you know background about sujan sujan is a yogic and meditation practitioner who studies and follows advaita vedanta based on non dualism his goal is to train groups on mindfulness and make meaning of meditation simple to follow and practice uh, he is a public speaker and has been practicing mindfulness for many years he has also delivered many talks on the subject for various groups so and mindfulness is proven to bring positivity and tranquility to life exactly what we are seeking for at this times this these difficult times so sujan over to you and so excited and again thank you so much for coming on namaste radio today namaste as uh, we are on a radio station called namaste so what what could be the best uh, platform than this to talk about spirituality but before we start i want to thank you vanshika and deep for being so kind enough in uh, thinking about society first because we're going through as they said the community is suffering we all are suffering and it's not different than you and i we all are going through this together and it's a great initiative to bring on uh, some awareness to uh, communities and i'm very thankful to giving me this chance to speak so thank you vanshika and deep uh, before we move forward i have a disclaimer uh, this presentation or thoughts and opinions presented here by me Uh, with sujan speaks does not substitute your medical treatment or diagnosis and we advise you to go to your physician and doctor if you have clinical condition this is something we can do at home on your own something that had been practiced 5000 years almost by eastern traditional uh, training for simple understanding i have divided this presentation into three 
major uh, subsections. The so first is introduction about coronavirus. What is the threat? What are we dealing with? And number two is how our body responds to this threat. And number three, I'll be able to share why it is important to be mindful and how we can practice it. So until we, we understand these two important first two points, it wouldn't make sense to, to explain mindfulness and meditation, especially at these um, pandemic uh, times. So the first session is introduction. So why, what is, what is the existential threat? There is something unknown, invisible, causing us to panic. We are in stress, we are in isolation, lockdown. There is a fear, there is anger, there is restlessness, you name it. There's everything going on possible on earth to our mind and body. We don't know if we'll be infected. There is a fear of death and it's really real. It's not something fictitious. When we get out of home, we're not sure how we're gonna survive, how we're gonna protect. So all those fears are real. There is no denial. And we're supposed to follow all the rules by local guidelines, CDC, your physician and all of those. But then the next point which comes to is how our body responds to these situations, right? When we have all these stress levels are up, we are in a panic mode, what happens to our mind and body? It's very important to understand first before we look for solutions, any solutions, especially spiritual solutions in this session. So the first thing we have is we're stressed, and when we are stressed, our mind produces a lot of thoughts that we cannot control. There's so many negative thoughts, negative emotions, and it's very easy to spread negative emotions with just one click of anything on phone or any internet or cyberspace. It's very easy to spread negative emotions way faster than virus itself. If I send you a sad face, that reflects a sad emotion right there with the help of one simple text. So that's what I meant when I say it can spread, negative emotions can spread faster than the virus itself. Then what it does to the community as together. So when we have this negativity going on, it comes to our body from our mind and it stimulates parasympathetic nervous system. You don't have to be a doctor to understand this. This is a biology. This is a physiology. This is a natural mechanism to fight with the threat, which is also known as fight or flight. So we have to make that decision in a moment. So when that parasympathetic, uh, uh, sympathetic, sorry, not parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, which is indication of flight or fight. And when you have this sympathetic nervous system secretes steroids in our body, and that steroid can cause a lot of different physiological phenomena, such as increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, uh, increased respiration, cytokine storms, which, which also creates inflammation, right? And when we have this inflammation, our immunity tends to go down. And with the act of panic and all these uh, things going on, we tend to make not very wise decisions. And we are vulnerable to catch any bacteria or viruses out there. And coronavirus is not different. It's a novel virus. We don't even know if we are immune to it or not. There is no cure to it. We are, that's why there is so much panic and stress. But when we have the sympathetic stimulation, everything is going down. So to stop that downward spiral, what do we do? There is anger, there is a despair, there is a depression. If 
you're stuck with somebody you don't want, there is a lot of argument and there's, it keeps on adding and adding. How do you handle that? So to do that, we come to the next part, which is the major part of this discussion, the mindfulness. And I'm sure you're excited to know how mindfulness can work. So based on Eastern uh, traditions trainings, uh, Advaita Vedanta, the one which I follow, there is something called pranayama. I'm sure you might have heard about pray pranayama. Uh, my goal is to not to share fancy words with you, but to really let you know what it really means. If you have tried uh, pranayama, Pranayam is nothing but your breathing. You're watching, you're breathing. That's what's the first step on pranayam. So what meditation means is really watching your breathing, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. But the first question I get from uh, folks that I don't get it. <laughs> when I close my eyes, I'm attacked with a lot of thoughts. And certain number of people, they tend to give up at that situation and say, this is not for me. The second point comes in their mind when they're meditating is, it's boring. It is boring. Unless you know what to do. And the third part is, well, I tried. It did not get me anywhere. I'm with you. I have gone through the similar thing when I started meditating, so there is no denying that. But let's evaluate each so you will understand what to do when we are meditating. There are a lot of ways of meditation. There's so much material available online, but I'm not going to cover how to meditate. I'm going to cover when you meditate, <clears throat> what's your goal? That's the most important thing mis misunderstood right now. So the first misconception is when you have these thoughts coming at you, we're not supposed to fight them. You cannot fight your thoughts because the thoughts comes from your memories and your memories comes from your brain. And our brain is evolved for millions of years. We just cannot. It's something so enormous. Having said that, now you get a point that what do we suppose what are we supposed to do with this thought then to John? Good question. Here's what we do. When you have these thoughts coming at you and trying to distract you, you can only watch and witness those thoughts. Literally you can just look at them. Don't be afraid. Don't try to fight. If you'll try to fight them, it will be more and then you will start down, downward spiral again. So let me give you an example how this works. If you throw a small stone in a pond, which is really calm, it creates waves, right? And if you want to stop those waves, you put your hand in that water and you create more waves. So now it's a cascading effect of waves. That exactly happens when we are trying to control our thoughts. You are giving rise to more thoughts. Like Maria Kondo said, in order for you to get rid of things that you do not want, you have to know what is there first in your closet or in your house. She's the one who is on Netflix who uh, explains how to clean your home or get rid of unwanted things. But if you do not know what you have, and if you're not welcoming that and watching it, you will not get total picture of the thoughts you have. So just go with those, look at your thoughts, do not be afraid, let them come. Be courageous enough to go a little longer. Now, next part, it's boring. If you can go around these thoughts, the next example I have is, let's say we have a task to look for a small little thing at the base of ocean on the beach. There's a little thing, but there's so many waves in the middle and it's not making it clear for you to see through, maybe shellfish or whatever you're looking for. What do you do? 
you still want to get that selfish or something that that's or maybe a pearl when you want to get that moment where everything dies down a little bit you're looking for that one moment and then you will be able to see clearly through that water there'll be dirt there is a water there are waves everything so now compare waves to thoughts you cannot control waves you're saying you can control ocean impossible all you can do is wait watch them witness them and we'll talk about the last part how not to attach our our thoughts or our self to mind and body in, in the last section but then once we we are so far in this process and may have meditated for long enough you will understand that there is a subtle voice within you that you're trying to reach with the help of meditation and that's the source of reality that's the real existence based on our eastern traditional methodology that's that's where the power lies so once you are done with this process you will feel that universal music and you will never be bored again but you have to commit to go through that process until you find that small pearl at the face of ocean it's beautiful believe me so that takes us to the next level what happens when you go to this level of meditation you have to understand you will have to do this meditation for a little while every day to go through that murky and disturbed water which is trying to distract you from going to your real self the real self higher consciousness so now let's talk about what happens when you if you say okay so john i got it i you got me down for sitting down 5 minutes every day twice a day for 90 days i'll do it but what's next the next part is remember we talked about sympathetic nervous system our entire goal now we are trying to explain scientifically how it affects why breathing affects and how it cools us down when we focus on our breathing like in pranayam our breathing takes over by mind and body so this is a breathing mind and body so three things take a turn and take each other's regulation in their hand so when you're breathing breathing will take over mind and body the next comes body the body will take over mind and breathing and if you meditate enough your mind will take over breathing and body this is we call auto regulation this is the goal we are looking forward to this is called actual meditation this is what should happen so in the next part when we achieve that state it doesn't take hundreds of years no it takes few weeks few days and months to at least get a good glimpse of that one small voice or subtle voice within us next part is the parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated and that has opposite effect of sympathetic fight and flight now the parasympathetic nervous system stimulates the ananda hormones what are these ananda hormones these are the one brings ecstasy security clear focus in mindfulness that we are talking about a clarity to see through and not distract us from this mind and body and go closer to our consciousness that secrets serotonin dopamine and oxytocin as you might have heard before when we stimulate parasympathetic nervous system this is the end result of it and it will give you immense ecstasy the state of ananda that we all should experience and have it for every day and we can achieve it after a certain amount of time so that's what happens 
I can tell you from my personal experience, I'm not saying I'm a guru. I'm not saying I'm an authority. I'm saying I'm a practitioner of spirituality, yoga, and meditation. And I'm here to share because I have experienced firsthand. Coming to the next part, what is that distracts us? Why we are distracted so much? And this is the last part that we will talk about it. And it's very important. Mind and body. The goal of meditation is to go above and beyond mind and body. And you might laugh at me and say, Sujan, you missed your medication today. Something is not right. What is that? <laughs> if we go beyond mind and body, what is left? Or if, if there is something left, what is it? How can I feel it? That's exactly what we are going to, we want to experience. So mind is always called monkey. Markada in, in Sanskrit. It always acts up based on memories and memories have thoughts. They always try to distract us and keeps us away from real us. When I say real me, meaning the higher consciousness which is watching in the background, the mind and the body. It's always watching. It's up to us to identify that these two things are different than my consciousness. That's the critical fundamental philosophy of non-dualism. Then comes the body. We learned about how to watch thoughts and go around it. Now the last part is body. Body has senses. Body has all this physiology we talked about. And it tends to give some information. But that information we need to interpret in the background, the real you, the higher consciousness, which you will feel after certain meditation. And then when you detach yourself or for a better word, not detach, when, when you say or you do not identify yourself with mind and body, there lies the wisdom. There is a liberty in that. Why? Because when your mind and body are trying to tell you something, they're trying to distract you every time from the real consciousness that you have in this background. That's where the entire consciousness, entire real existence, the rest is non-existent. So always keep in mind, we'll, we'll have one simple experiment. If I ask you to stand up and walk one step towards yourself, where would you go? You would be just sitting in one place because that's who you are. Or there is one more question. What is that one thing never changed when you went through small child and now you're adult? You went through ups and downs, emotional ups and downs, ecstatic movements, so many amazing happenings. One thing never changed. That's higher consciousness. When sun reflects on an object, we cannot call those objects sun. Exactly take consciousness as sun and that gives a reflection on mind or body and we're tempted to say that's real me. It is not. The reflections are coming from real you, within you, the sun rays that's making those glitter or shine. So go above and beyond and reach to that inner self and inner consciousness with the help of mindfulness. You will be calm, composed, with a good immunity, and be ready to fight any challenges you may have in this life. And thank you for watching this video. And back to Anshika and Deep. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm just quickly going to cancel. Yes, so here we are back. You know, with so much technology, it takes a little while to 
come back to like okay let me get the screen right but uh, thank you so much sujan bahut acha laga aapne bahut acche se you spoke in the some things that sometimes we feel uh, you know we know and probably we are doing great right but then you know when i listen to someone like you and uh, i actually have to you know now introspect and try to change those things in me and you know uh use that so thank you so much uh, i'm sure everybody uh, would have enjoyed it deep how was it uh, yeah no i i, I agree with what you say <laughs> i i agree with what she says you know now like uh there's some more definitely some great knowledge and and uh information you gave so definitely need to start practicing that now more more often thank you sir thank you so much for that thank you dude thank you thank you again and uh everyone that was mr sujan shah uh and he goes by uh sujan speaks it is a page on facebook so do mm-hmm. follow him on facebook and instagram also right yes So Sujan speaks is uh, what you need to follow on Facebook and Instagram. We have tagged uh, him uh, uh, on the space about mm-hmm. this Facebook mm-hmm. live, so you can just go click to the page and start following him. Uh, and uh, you know, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to him directly. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, and uh, we also want to thank uh, Arling's Chinese cuisine. Thank you. Right, Dave. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Thank, thank you, you so much for hosting this, Alex. Yes, they were oh, the sponsors you. for this, uh, you know, uh, mindfulness talk. So we want to thank Alex Chani. Then again, thank you, Sujan. Thank you for coming in today and speaking uh, and uh, you know talking with our listeners, viewers on Namaste Radio. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Wanchika, Neep, and thank you, Namaste Radio. You guys thank are you. doing very important job. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you and stay Thank safe. You. Stay safe. Thank, Thank you. you. Namaste. Namaste. We will see everybody this Sunday at, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. and uh looking forward to a great show on Sunday. Again, thank you so much sir for coming on. Thank you. Great.